I'm really excited to be here. Um, I've, I've been looking to get back involved in the game and um, this is a great opportunity to try and build up the, the women's part of the, or contribute to building up the, the women's element of the, the club. You know, West Sydney is a, a hotbed of, of football, both in, in the men's and the women's space. And, and hopefully we can, you know, really build a, a strong women's base here. Um, well, I've been talking to, to people at the club for a little while, and the club is very ambitious. It's very ambitious to build its, its women's programme from the A-League women all the way down. So it, it really wants to make, you know, the women's programme a significant part of the club. And that's kind of what appeals to me. You know, projects where you can actually start things out and start to build things is something that I, I enjoy doing. And the club is very ambitious in that space, and, and hopefully I can help contribute to that. I mean, it's one of them where you put a list together and then, you, you know, I'm very much a hands-on person. I'm very much a practical person. Uh, I'm not big into sort of lighting lots of things down, but I want to get in there and get things done. And, and that's a variety of things. So it goes all the way from, you know, helping to, to strengthen and develop our A-League women's team to actually looking at the future of the club and hopefully get a club set up with the, in the women's space, the same as the men's space, where there's an academy and there's a pathway for young girls in West Sydney to come all the way through from a young age to actually then play in the A-League women's team and then hopefully to go on and play for the Matildas and then perhaps have professional careers in other parts of the world. There's different things in different players, you know, there's, there's not just one characteristic that you look for. So it's things, you know, it's often a hard thing to actually explain specifically, but things catch your eyes at times. So it might be you see a midfield player who you think she's actually seen the picture or has got vision to play. It might be a centre half you see who's dominant, is a great organiser uh, and is a really out and out defender. It might be somebody that's got pace. It might be somebody that you see that's got real, just raw talent. So the, there's different things that, that you look for. I mean, ultimately, and, and quite simplistically, there are, are three elements that end up making a, a good player. One is the good physical qualities, two is good technical qualities, and three is, you know, a game awareness, the ability to actually take those technical and physical skills and make them effective on the field. So generally, that's kind of the things that you're looking for. Well, let's, and, and people keep throwing this cliched word in, it is, is a bit of a process. You know, you need to sort of build a foundation and you need to look at ways to improve. So, the, you know, some of the ways immediate to improve is to look at um, recruitment and to try and get a team that's, that's strong enough to, to be competitive. But at the same time, you want to be competitive in, in the short term and continue to build for the future so that you're building, um, not just, you're not sort of just suddenly going out and throwing a lot of money at a team to be a one season wonder. What we want to do is we want to build a team and we want to build a club and we want to build a group of players that want to be here for the longer term. So it's a whole, it's a combination of all of those things. So, you know, we want to get success this season, um, but at the same time, we also want to build for the future. So it's not just one season, but it's going to be continuous. You know, and that's a longer, but that's a longer term project. So, you know, the, the first thing that, as I say, when you look at what are the priorities, the first priority is to, to look at our A-League women's team and to get our, our players signed up, to get the recruitment done well, and to make sure that we're ready and prepared from a player perspective, from a staff perspective, and from a club perspective going into this next season. The, the second thing that needs to happen around the club is we want to build for the future, and that's a constant growing of the A-League women's team, but it's also the development underneath that. I think it's hard to compare different countries. If you take the US for example, the US have more female players probably playing in California than most of the world put together. So they've got a huge playing base and a very different uh, culture and environment coming through the systems. You know, somewhere like Canada is, is kind of similar to Australia. You know, they've got similar numbers of players playing. So they've, they've got similarities in a way and it's a you know you've got different things so you've got club development and then you've got your your national development as well where you're trying to develop teams for your national your actual national teams and and in some ways we are, we are similar we've got similar cultures to Canada and New Zealand um, but we've also got our own unique cultures that we need to do things that work effectively here so there, there are different there are different aspects to why clubs or 
or organisations run programmes. You know, sometimes they're development, elite development programmes that are going to, let's say, the Matildas level or to the A-League women's level, or there are community programmes where it's to give opportunities for girls to play and be part of a club. So, you know, within the club itself, you, you know, you're potentially looking at, at different streams like there are in the game. So, you know, ultimately at West Sydney Wanderers, what we would want is a, an A-League women's team and then an elite programme underneath that. In amongst that, you know, that doesn't stop the club being involved in community programmes as well because that is very important to, to building up the support within the club and to have the connection with the, the community that we live in. From where I sit, obviously, that's the elite end. So, so, you know, what I would like to see is that, you know, eventually there's a, you know, a, a women's programme from the, the SAP girls all the way through to under 18s that then feed into the A-League women's programme that perhaps feed into an NPL team and so you have that pathway all the way through and within that pathway you, you start to develop elite players um, and, and that, that would be the key thing, that, I mean that's your ideal project and that happens at professional clubs throughout the world. Um, and what you ideally want to do is do that as well as possible so that you start developing talent and, and local talent that goes through and plays at the highest level. But as I say, within that, you've also got, you know, there's only a small percentage that are going to go all the way. So within that, what you want to do is create an environment where girls really want to be part of the team, part of the club and part of the culture. You know, you want players ultimately want to play somewhere where they feel that they belong and, and you know a culture of a club you know it's all about the people in the club you know you can I've seen um, I've seen meetings where you know small forests have been cut down and people put things in butcher's paper and it really doesn't mean anything the culture is about the people that work within the club and, and what your expectations are of the people that run the club and then filter that down to what the expectations are of the players that are coming through that club. But I think that everybody, that we create an environment that players want to be here. I think that's it. That's ultimately, you want to create an environment where players want to be here and staff want to be here. And, and, and if you create that environment, then that you start to build on that. And that, that's really critical. It, it's interesting, you, you kind of look at, there's a couple of things you look at. And, and those are tend to be the experiences and things that you think you've perhaps contributed or helped along the way. You know, like people talk about, you know, that you won that and you won this. And, and that, that's okay um, at times, but it's kind of, ultimately it's more about the people and, and the experiences that you, you've had with them and the teams. And I think, um, you know, for me, we've, the, the, there's been a couple of uh, critical moments in, in the Matildas programme that, that stick out to me probably more than anything and they would be um, the, probably the two things that stick out most is when we went to the World Cup in 2007 and that was the first time the team won a game at the World Cup and, and, and the reason that sticks out, that becomes significant because that, that's the kind of thing that really sets the platform for the programme going forward because all of a sudden the players suddenly say well we've, we've arrived, we belong, we can go out and play anybody and beat them. And the same thing when we won the Asian Cup in 2010, that gave the team and the players and the programme a belief and the players coming in a belief of what you can, you can achieve. So th those are probably the things that, that kind of stick out to me as being important parts of things that I've been very fortunate to be involved in. I'm just delighted to be here, I'm delighted to get, you know, I've had um, several months where I've, I've been doing just bits and pieces and which I've quite enjoyed, to be perfectly honest. But I'm really uh, delighted to be back in, in football and, and in a job that I'm really looking forward to doing.